it says, and one called out to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. When we worship God like the seraphim, we are reminded of how holy the Lord is. Amen. And when you are reminded and you see him as holy, it causes you to openly express, Lord, I'm a fan of yours. <laughs> Lord, I'm a fan of yours. You know, when you go to the game and your favorite player dunk, catch that alley and dunk or do whatever, run the track, whatever, you be chilling. Yeah, 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 yeah. You worshiping that person. You see that touchdown, so it's a car. Man, you see that touchdown. So you worship, you let them know I'm a fan. But when you go and say, Lord, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. You say, Lord, I'm a fan of yours. Can I get your autograph? Amen. Get your bad self. Yes. You let God know how bad he is. God wants you to tell him, oh, man, don't mess with me. I told them folks, leave me alone. <laughs> you messing with a child of God, baby. Amen. <laughs> I had a co-worker tell me that the other day about something happened. It was funny. It's crazy. I can't even get into it. But he, <laughs> he said, that's what he get for messing with a child of God. <laughs> when you tell God how bad he is, how awesome he is, it make him want to do more. He wanna, it make him want to score more touchdowns for you. <laughs> he want to give you the game ball. Here is the game ball, baby. I did this for you. Because you know how bad I am. And so what God wants is to hear us tell him and others how cold he is. God cold blooded, baby. He'll do it. Watch this. Shut lips don't do nothing for him. I want your mouth open. I want you to tell me how awesome I am. I want you to tell others how awesome I am and watch what I do in your life. Verse number four. It says, and the foundation of the thresholds trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filling with smoke. Watch this. The cries of the seraphim caused the temple to shake. It wasn't shaking because God was talking. God wasn't even talking yet. It was shaken because the worship in that place was so awesome that the foundation of the temple shook. I want you to understand that as we begin to worship and open up our mouths, baby, we can shake some stuff up with our worship. Amen. We can cause some things to shake loose. We can cause some things to break loose. That miracle you need can break loose. My God, that money you need can break loose. That door you need open can break loose when you begin to worship for real. The seraphim called the temple to shake. All right. Yes. But not only did the temple shake, smoke began to fill the room. All right. The more they began to worship, the more smoke began to fill the room. And I want you to understand that that smoke represents the Shekinah. Who right. Jesus. Or the Shekinah. What is that? That's the glory of God. What is the Shekinah? The Shekinah is the radiance of God's dwelling in the midst of his people. It denotes the immediate presence of God as opposed to God in the abstract or aloof. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Shekinah, baby. Woo! My God, I feel it right there. The Shekinah. That's God's presence touching. That's God's presence healing. That's God's presence restoring. It's the Shekinah of God. The more the seraphim cried out to God, the more his presence began to fill the temple. Oh, Jesus, come down, Lord. Come down and touch. Come down and heal. Come down and deliver. Come down and set free. Every time we shut up our mouth, every time we act disinterested, we prohibit a move of God. Amen. Amen. Ooh, man, we prohibit a move of God. And watch this. I don't blame God for not doing stuff for us when we don't worship. Thank you, Lord. Because I wouldn't want to do nothing for somebody who don't acknowledge me either. Come on, let's be real. You, you, you've been good to some folk. And you love them, and, and, and 
All of a sudden, you get in a public place and they act like they don't know you. Yeah. 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 Who came to the party with him? Uh. <laughs> Treat you like the stand-up prom day. You don't want to be with that person no more after that. I hope you don't. Now, if you're desperate, we're going to lay hands on you and rebuke that desperate spirit out of you. I hope you don't want to be with that person no more. That's how God feels, y'all. Well, we don't acknowledge him like that. We don't cry out to him like that. He's like, man, I ain't doing nothing for him. I ain't doing nothing for her. Tell the truth, when your kids don't do right by you, Man, I ain't doing nothing else for him. Mm -hmm. You ungrateful little snotty old brat, you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God sees us as brats. Mm -hmm. We don't acknowledge him. Amen. But watch this. I'm about to get out of here. Isaiah's response. Watch this. The whole scene changed Isaiah's outlook on himself when he saw God exalted he recognized how unfit he was and how much he needed the Lord to purify him. Verse 5, it says, Woe is me, for I am ruined. In other words, Isaiah is like, man, I'm a mess. Mm, glory, glory. When I see the beauty of who the Lord is and when I see how the seraphims worship him, man, I'm a mess. I really ain't as good as I thought I was. <laughs> he says, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I, li and I live among a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. In other words, Isaiah's like, what did I do in my current state to complement the glory I just saw? I'm a person of unclean lips. I'm not even fit to be in his presence. What can I do to compliment that glory? I don't have nothing to offer with my ruined, toe up self. All I need to do is get my, I need to get myself together, really, is what he's saying. Amen. When you see God for who he is, you can't help but get yourself together if you really see him. Oh, God. But when you don't see him for who he is, my God, you will think that you're right when you're not. Amen. Isaiah says there's nothing that I can say to add to what I just saw. And I want you to understand that sometimes we can be in a worship experience that's so awesome that there's nothing left to say but bow down, baby. Mm. Hit the Amen. deck. Somebody say, hit the deck. Hit the deck. The glory that came. The glory. <laughs> the glory. Sometimes the Holy Ghost will come and punch you out. <laughs> Especially when you've been running and trying to fight God. Amen. Your arm too sharp to box with God. Amen. The Holy Ghost will punch. Bill! Woo! Bill! Woo! You don't want to let it go. You want to stay in your flesh. Bill! Woo! I want to stay in my flesh. Bill! Woo! Woo! Something just hit me. Woo! That's it. You buck dancing. Amen. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. And sometimes it don't take a whole lot. Just some folk who just stirring up the atmosphere. And you come in thinking everything's going to be cool. Next thing you know, you're on the floor, snot slobbering all over the place. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Amen. Isaiah said, I'm not fit. But in verses 9 through 10, I want to give you this and we're going to get out the way. He said, go and tell this people, keep on listening, but do not perceive. Keep on looking, but do not understand. Render their hearts of this people insensitive, their ears dull, and their eyes dim. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and return and be healed. Amen. Amen. In other words, Isaiah, let them know they figure in. Their ears are dull. Their eyes are dull. They can't do nothing for me, but I want to give them this too. Let them know on the flip side <laughs> that if they hear me, if they see me, and if they understand me and return, they can be healed. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus, help me up in here. Uh